why I choose to keep the commandments as a gay member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. My name is Dennis Schleicher and I'm a convert to the church and I felt inspired to share with all of you. I'm af often asked, why do you choose to keep the commandments? They don't say the word choose, but they say, why do you, why are you single? You don't deserve that. So in this video, I want to talk about why I choose because we all have agency. When people say to me, oh my gosh, you guys are the churches, the church of no's. My response is, no, we're the church of I choose. The purpose, to share my perspective on why I continue to keep the commandments as an LGBT or gay member of the Latter-day Saint Church. Contextualizing faith and identity in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the commandments are considered divine instruction given by God to help individuals like myself and you to live a righteous life and return to him. Commandments from the Latter-day Saint faith is derived from multiple sources, including the Bible and the Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants, and the teachings of modern day prophets, seers, revelators, and prophets, just like what's found in Holy Scripture of the Holy Bible. Observing commandments is closely tied to the concept of agency or the ability to choose right from wrong. Members believe that following the commandments or I believe and know it brings blessings, happiness, and a closer communion with God while breaking them leads to spiritual distance and hardship. The commandments within the Latter-day Saint Church conference a wide range of morals ranging from ethical spiritual principles such as honesty chastity and observance of the sabbath to name a few for many latter-day saint members following the commandments is not just about obedience it's also an expression of faith and identity it's a way to show commitment to our beliefs and to participate fully in our religious community. Next, my personal journey as an LGBTQ individual within the faith. Then I'll be getting into personal reasons why I keep the commandments and reasons for following a covenant path and lifestyle. My personal journey, I like to simplify it. I'm the last person in the world you would have ever thought would have joined this church. I went from being a former LGBTQ advocate, now being an advocate for our Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm going to leave it up to that. I feel like I repeat myself a lot when I share my testimony. So I want to get into the reasons for keeping the commandments and just say, I was not a good person before I was baptized. Any of us lack wisdom, let us ask of God. James 1.5, 1 one of my favorite verses. Three reasons for keeping the commandments. One, a sense of spiritual fulfillment and connection with God. Keeping the commandments can offer a profound sense of spiritual fulfillment for many people, including myself. The act of following these divine instructions is often seen as a way to draw closer to God. Align one's will with divine and invite spiritual blessings. It's a way to cultivate a personal relationship with God. Understanding that obedience to his law is an expression of love and reverence. Two, the importance of community and shared values. Commandments often serve as a foundational set of shared values within a religious community. Following them helps us to foster a sense of belonging and unity amongst members that follow the same thing. This collective adherence to a set of principles can strengthen the community, create a supportive environment, and enable its members to work together more effectively for common goals. Number three, moral or ethical framework framework for life the commandments provide a structured set of guidance guidelines for moral and ethical behavior 
in a world filled with complex challenges and choices, having a clear cut set of principles can serve as a helpful roadmap Following commandments can help individuals make decisions that align with their values, navigate moral dilemmas, and lead a life that find meaningful and fulfilling. For me, it's a lot more than that. It's also, I'm honoring myself as a temple. My body is a temple and I'm honoring God. By honoring myself, I honor him. And that's a little deeper version for myself, as simple as it is, it's still about honoring him. I say, I joined this church to please God, not you, end of story. So back off when people are contentious or negative about my fact being a member of the church or joining as a gay man and leaving behind that lifestyle. Next, let's talk about the role of love and acceptance. One, commandments about love and acceptance in various religious traditions, including the Latter-day Saint Church. Commandments often emphasize the importance of love and acceptance. For instance, the New Testament in the Bible contains the two great commandments that Jesus highlighted, to love God with all thy heart, soul, and mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. In the Latter-day Saint Church, these principles are reinforced through modern day revelations and teachings, highlighting the importance of compassion, kindness, and acceptance of others, regardless of our backgrounds or beliefs. Many people find that living by commandments, emphasizing love and acceptance positively impacts their lives. For example, someone may find that following the principles of love thy neighbor has led them to meaningful community service, resulting in a richer, more fulfilling life, or the act of forgiving someone as commanded in religious text, might lift a burden of resentment, leading to greater personal peace and improved relationships. Living these commandments can not only enrich your own life, but also positively affect those around you, creating a ripple effect of love and acceptance in the community. Now, my personal example of this is I was welcomed and embraced by open arms when I was baptized into the church. And that was the foundation, just like the commandments are the cement that hold up a house. Being welcomed was the sense that laid that groundwork, laid that foundation for who I am today. Next, we're going to talk about navigating challenges. One, Acknowledge the difficulties that you face. Strategies or ways that you can navigate these challenges while still keeping the commandments. Let's discuss common issues people face, including myself. I think I always use the, 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 the term, I'm so green, when in fact, we're all so green. Wouldn't you agree? One, acknowledge the difficulties and challenges. Many people find it challenging to consistently keep religious commandments. Challenges may include societal pressure to conform to norms that clash with one's beliefs, personal weaknesses, or tendencies that make certain commandments difficult to keep, or even crises of faith that make adherence to any commandment tough. Now I gotta talk about this. When we talk about moral and peer pressures, I see so many times people are losing a testimony in our Savior Jesus Christ and they're developing it in man or their young women's president or the Relief Society president or Elders Quorum presidency. It's not, a, do you go to church for them or do you go to church for God? I go to church for God. Two, strategies or ways to navigate challenges. 
different strategies can be effective in helping individuals keeping the commandments, even amidst challenges. Seek support. Building a support network of like-minded individuals can offer emotional strength and accountability. For myself, I have what we call a buddy system. It's a list of 15 to 20 returning missionaries I will send a group text to, and they know whoever responds to me first is on the phone to help me deal with that. Returning missionaries could use that sense of purpose. Stay informed. Understanding the reasoning and the purpose behind a commandment can make it easier to commit to following it. Personal reflection and prayer, regular self-examination and communication with God can offer insights to how to best in line your sights and prioritize with religious teachings. Prioritizing, while it may be difficult keeping all commandments equally, focusing on the ones most relevant closer to one's own circumstances. Be compassionate towards yourself. Everyone makes mistakes. No one's perfect. The key is to learn from them and strive for improvement rather than being consumed by guilt. Navigating challenges while keeping the commandments often requires a multifaceted approach. Combining practical strategies with spiritual resilience. And I always say, when you have a confession to make, when meeting with your bishop or someone in your bishopric and telling them, it's not like being called to the principal's office in high school or elementary school. Your bishop is there to help you. Your bishop is the one that has the keys. And I find it refreshing talking to him. Next, we're gonna talk about the importance of dialogue. One, encourage open dialogue on LGBTQ issues. Open and respectful dialogue about LGBT issues within the church community is essential for fostering a more inclusive environment. This dialogue can help to dispel myths, reduce stigmas, and encourage understanding. It's important for church leaders to create safe spaces where these conversations can take place and for members to approach them with an open mind and a compassionate heart. Engaging with meaningful discussions can lead to greater empathy and help the community navigate the complex intersections of faith and sexual orientation or gender identity. I have to say though, we need to know when to walk away. There's a difference between respectful dialogue and disrespectful dialogue. So it's important for you to know when the spirit feels like it left and you need to go, I'm done. Number two, each person's journey is an individual and complex. It's crucial to recognize that everyone's spiritual journey is unique, particularly when it comes to navigating issues of faith and sexual or, or gender identity. People are at different places in their understanding, beliefs, and acceptance, both of themselves and others. Emphasizing the individual complexity can foster a more nuance to compassion and an approach to following commandments and living a life of faith. It underscores the need for personalized spiritual guidance and community support and for a non-judgmental atmosphere that allows for questioning and growth that is constructive and is not gonna tear us down. One of my favorite verses about this, well, it's not about actually this in particular, but I just feel inspired. I wasn't going to talk about this. I'm gonna paraphrase. It's in 2 Nephi chapter 2, verse 2. Nevertheless, my son Jacob, God, Nevertheless, my son Jacob, God will consecrate thy afflictions for thy gain. 
when Jacob was in the wilderness. And I'm going to say, he will consecrate all of our afflictions for our gain. And I'm going to add to that, providing we are striving to be faithful. In conclusion, I just want to close with my testimony and I want to encourage all of you to please like, share, send this to Texas to friends, post it on Facebook, Pinterest, any social media platform. If you enjoyed this message, it truly helps me. Also, if you shop on Amazon, there's an affiliate link where I generate a commission as a content creator to support the tools, microphones, the things that are needed to continue to bring you these, these messages. I also want to close with something that by saying, again, the spirit is prompting me. I don't have the keys over you. I'm not the one that I don't have the stewardship. So if you have questions, bring them to those who do or those who have the authority. My testimony about the way this book has changed my life is simple. Don't judge a book by its cover like I did. I can testify that this book has changed my life in conjunction with other scriptures like the Bible or Doctrine and Covenants, or now even the Pearl of Great Price. I can testify by constantly studying and praying every morning and every night before I go to bed and when I feel prompted that it allows me to stay on the covenant path. I can testify that there is a lot of temptation out there. Is it easy? No, it's not. But is it worth it? A hundred and twenty plus percent. And I know that as we continue to strive, we, this, if we mess up, that's what we have the atonement for. That's what we have sacrament for. And don't be afraid to test, to talk to your bishop. And I know that as we continue to do this, he, will consecrate thy afflictions. And I say this as my testimony in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet.